Hi, John Valvano here. In this video, I want to combine all the concepts of the chapter into a very powerful debugging technique called dump. Okay, and here's a video from a couple of times ago where we implemented a square root and we used a main program here to test it. Okay, so but rather than single stepping and looking at the variables, what I'm going to do is create an array here uh, of the same type as my numbers. Okay, I'm going to create an array. Okay, uh, and in this array, I'm going to put the information. Uh, you can see I uh, I ran it 11 times, so I don't know. I make it I make it uh, up to 12. Okay, and we can see that there's both an input and an output. Okay, so I'm going to call this my input buffer, and I'm going to create a second array, which is going to be my output buffer. And so uh, we have no print, so we can't print out the results. Okay, uh, in order to index into this, I'm going to need a, a an index. Okay, so you went. 32 underline T, spell it right, John. 32 underline T, uh, counter. This is going to tell me how many elements um, that, we, uh, that we've that we stored. Okay, so I'll, I'll initialize my counter at runtime to zero. And now what I'm going to do is make a uh, a function, a dumping function, okay, which takes two parameters, right? It's going to take um, it's going to take the uh, input parameter, and it's going to take the output parameter, and save them in the array. I'm going to dump them into the array. So that's my prototype, uh, and as always, I want to use it first. Okay, so right, right here, rather than have a, rather than have a, um, a breakpoint, and mistake, you know, sort of uh, uh, painstakingly each looking at all the answers, I'm going to dump the two answers. Okay. Uh, the input and output, and now I got to implement it. And so if my counter, now in this particular case it won't, but in other cases it might. If the counter is bigger than uh, 11, greater, bigger than or equal to 12, okay. Uh, my thing is full, and so I will just return, okay, because my buffers are full. Otherwise, I'm going to store the, I'm going to store the uh, data into my arrays. And I'm going to use the index, okay, B. I'm going to store my input in here. I'm going to dump it, okay? And I'm going to uh, store the output in here. Now, I could have packed the numbers together and had a fewer... Could have. Okay, so I've saved it in. And one last thing i got to do to make sure I get them all is to increment my counter, okay? Again, this is a permanent variable. Uh, okay, what about, uh, no, I don't need this one. I don't need that one. And I don't need these. All right. Uh, yeah, debug time. Let's see if it compiles. Yes, good. And debug. Okay, here we are in the debugger. And um, <clears throat> what we can do is uh, put the buffers into the watch window. Okay. And so these are going to be like um, uh, these are going to be like observation points, okay? And so now, rather than single stepping, what I'm going to do is hit the go button. Boom, go, okay? And there's my answer right there, okay? So for the input values of zero through hundred, 
my output values are exactly what we saw before. But you see, I now have a record uh, that I can now put in my report to show that I've debugged it. So this is a very powerful debugging technique that allows me to record the functional behavior, which means the input, to the output and record it uh, in my documentation. All right, uh, this is a very powerful technique. I'd like to do one last thing is put a breakpoint. Let me do a reset. Re no, I got to pause, reset, restart. This time I want to put a breakpoint into the into the uh, into the buffer. Uh, run to that breakpoint. Observe the um, observe the disassembly. Okay. Okay. So here is my uh, where's my yeah here's my dump. Okay. And so what I want to do is a very crude estimation of execution speed by simply counting the number of instructions. One, two, three, okay, now four, five, six, seven. This branch is going to happen. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, uh, 22, which is going to jump right here, 23, 24. 24 instructions uh, get executed. And if we assume that the uh, each instruction takes on average two bus cycles, uh, that is less than 50 bus cycles. And so if we're running at 80 megahertz, the time to execute this whole function here is less than a microsecond. And if the time to execute this function is very short, we're going to classify this as minimally intrusive. Okay, it's In other words, the presence of the debugging instrument that's capturing this important data does not significantly affect the behavior of my system. Very, very powerful debugging technique. All right, enjoy.